Hi, I'm Aria. Um, I'll be going to Cambridge to study engineering and I'll talk about my ESAT score. So in my ESAT, I got a 7.6 for maths one, an 8.9 for maths two, and a 6.8 for physics. And when it comes to revising for the ESAT, I feel like I've done a lot of trial and error and have pretty much worked out what works and what doesn't work. So in this video, I'm just gonna like go through that, um, make sure you understand what to do and how to get the best score you can. What do you think a good ESAT score is? So what should we be aiming for? I mean, this is gonna be a boring answer, but I'm gonna say like, a good ESAT score would be like the best you can get, right? <laughs> so disgusting, but it, that, that's the truth. I'll actually, I'll actually give you a quick story about this. Um, so this is on the ESAT results day, right? Um, and your boy's gassed, because <laughs> goal or right score. And uh, you know, one of my friends comes up to me and he's really devastated, like really sad. Um, I don't remember exactly what score he got, but he got around like a 5.0 or something like that. Sorry, Danny. <laughs> <Five or> <laughs> um, but yeah, he was, he was just really disappointed. But you know, after that, he spent all of his effort um, practicing for the interview and he smashes it. And, and like a month later, guess what happens? He gets, an offer. he gets an offer. So, like, come on now. So, you know, DSAT, don't get me wrong, it's an important part of your application, but the interview is the most important part of your application. Like, the ESAT is not that deep. So, you know, even if you feel like you did worse than expected in your ESAT, um, you know, don't lose hope. Just prepare for the interview, make sure you smash that, and then you'll be fine. I think that's a really, really good point. Like, interview is so, so, so important. I mean, if you get like a one or two in the ESAT, you're probably cooked. Uh, yeah. But I feel like a four or a five, yeah, yeah, and then still you still have a chance. Yeah, four or five, you still have a chance, and then anything higher than that obviously really helps. Um, you can use Freedom of Information to find out like college average scores. I think um, whatdotheyknow.com is really, really useful. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, we're back. Yeah, so I, I guess the question was like, how do you sort of begin with your ESAT prep? Um, how did you first approach it? So before I talk about my prep, I want to just gonna g I want to just give a quick overview of what the ESAT actually is. The ESAT, in its essence, <laughs> is just a really time pressured multiple choice exam, right? That's all it is. Like you get roughly one minute per question, right? So you don't really get a lot of time. But that also means that each question is not that complicated, and usually you need only like one or two tricks to solve the problem. So, there are going to be like two principles um, that will motivate your revision. One is pattern recognition, so going over the questions again and again and again, and until you understand the pattern, until you understand the trick, so you can solve that question and other similar questions. And the second thing is time pressure, and this is so, so important. You need to practice in time conditions because you have to get used to that stress. So, based on those principles, how did you kind of first start off your revision? I'm not going to say how I started because it was actually it was, it was not the best way. I'll, I'll say the most optimal way to start. So before you use any past papers, the first thing you need to do is look through the specification and make sure you understand the topics. Like this is so, so important. Like I actually got this advice before, before I did my ESAT, but I ignored it because I was like, oh, whatever. I'll just learn the content by doing the past papers, right? And it'll be fine. And it just didn't work. <laughs> I mean, it worked for the math modules reasonably well, but not for physics. You know, make sure you look through the specification Actually, the reason why I did relatively worse in my physics module was because like some of the questions, I just had no idea what they were talking about. So definitely make sure you go through the specification, understand the topics. Now, the past papers that you should do in order, right? So number one, this is the first thing you should do. Make sure you do all the multiple choice questions from the anger and the answer. Don't do the questions that aren't multiple choice. Um, they're just a waste of your time. And then also do like the past papers from the ESAT and the resources on the UAT website itself. You know, any questions that you find tricky or you're not able to solve because you skip um, or they're just hard, right? Um, add them to Anki. So you do them again and again and again. So you develop that pattern recognition and understand how to solve the problems. Okay, the second resource I would use is TMUA Paper 1s. And check your answers with r 2 Do you know who that is? Um, and with his walkthroughs, because he will just help you learn faster. It's just a time hack. Um, again, time conditions, make sure any hard questions you add to Anki again. Okay, the third thing I would use is this YouTuber called JPy Maths. He's Do you know? Yeah, he is yeah, the GOAT. He basically, shout out, Maths. shout out bro. He basically just <laughs> uploads really short math videos from like a variety of sources, gives you tips and helps you solve the questions faster. Um, so yeah, definitely use him. Uh, the fourth thing I would use, <laughs> the fourth thing I would use is um, the UKMT Senior Math Challenge. They're really useful, give you tips as well. Um, fifth thing I would use, multiple choice questions from the PATs or the MATs. And that's about it. Okay. Cool, so thank you for letting us know about the resources. A lot of interesting ones. The first thing that I wanted to ask with regard to those resources is like, 
For example, with the UK MT Senior Maths Challenge, I was a bit tentative about doing that. Um, you obviously did really, really well in maths too, which is most similar to Tamir. What resource do you think helped the most with that? Um, so I, if your sole objective is to improve your score in the ESAT, I would do it from the order of priority like I mentioned. So one, two, three, and four. Um, the reason I put UKMT last is because the time conditions are a bit more lenient than the ESAT. Um, but yeah, I would, I would focus on ENGA, TMUA, st that stuff first before you move on to the UKMT. Because I feel like the question topics are a bit a bit more varied, you know. Cool, yeah, nice, thank you. So I guess the next thing I wanted to ask about is kind of like exam strategy, because I know um, like a lot of it also comes down to just doing well on the day itself, like being good at an exam, beyond being good at the content. So kind of what's your advice for exam strategy and doing well on the exam? First thing is, it's highly unlikely that you're gonna be able to solve every single question with like full confidence, right? Some of the questions, you're just gonna have to guess and skip, basically. So let's let's talk about that that key exam strategy skill. So number one, there's guessing, right? So this is stuff like process of elimination and stuff like that. And the, re the reason I mentioned those YouTubers, the JPI Maths guy and Archer Drew too, is that frequently in their videos, you know, they help you narrow down your guess, eliminate possibilities. So definitely use those resources. And the second thing is skipping, right? You need to figure out when to skip a question. A really nice tip I got to deal with this was, you know, if I read a question and I don't even know how to start within like 10 seconds, say, I'm just going to guess and skip. Because if you think about it, like if you just spend 10 seconds and you don't even know how to start, how on earth do you expect to solve the question mm -hmm. in like 60 seconds? Like it's just not, it's just unrealistic. Yeah, I think a lot of people are quite afraid of guessing and skipping just because they think like this is a Cambridge exam, I need to make sure I try everything and stuff like that. Yeah. Whereas in reality, guessing and skipping can be one of your most valuable assets. Yeah. All ESAT marks are made equal. And what I mean by that is you can get a really easy question right and you can get a really difficult question right and they're both only one, worth one, like one mark. Yeah, so yeah. Um, it kind of is advantageous to you if you really just focus on those easy questions. Yeah, I, I'd say the analogy I have is like, you want to like skim through like the whole paper, right? And just like ignore the hard questions, pick up those easy marks first, and then maybe go back to the hard questions if you have time at the end. So one more thing that I want to ask about is kind of like, what happens when you face like hard questions? Because sometimes I used to face hard questions in the exam and I really wouldn't know what to do. Um, and I kind of got like, you kind of got a bit shook by the hard questions. Yeah, yeah. So you don't want to focus on the easy ones. So what would your advice be? The thing is with hard questions, um, they're, placed in the exam to like as a time sink right they're just they're just trying to weed out the people that can't skip the question <laughs> but again like the best way to improve on tricky questions is just literally practice you need to develop that pattern recognition of doing the hard questions over and over until you understand like how to approach these i guess the next thing i want to ask about is kind of like um, how do you really understand the topics? Like if you want to deeply understand something, let's say for physics, right? If there's a really difficult concept which you want to deeply understand from first principles, um, what sort of way would you go about it? Um, so the first thing that comes to mind, obviously, is teachers. But, you know, I'm aware that not everyone has access to good teachers. The second thing I would say is, you know, use ChatGPT to give you like quick overviews, quick summaries of the topic. Um, you know, there's probably a random Indian YouTuber out there <laughs> that goes through the topic in like a really short concise way um but like bear in mind like you don't need to know about the topic in like complete full detail detail like it's usually just like a couple of equations that you need to know how to apply so you can learn that quite quickly yeah cool so i, I wanted to ask also like how do you best use anki in preparation for the esap okay, um i'm actually not going to go over that because the person sitting next to me has a great tutorial oi, oi, on, hey, on, on how to use anki that's my guy right there guy. so on. if you want to want to know how to use that Watch that video. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> Amazing. So the next thing I wanted to kind of ask is how much time did you spend preparing for the ESAP? Because obviously it's an important exam. It takes place in like October. Um, how much time did you dedicate towards it? So I feel like I'm an outlier because I spent quite a lot long time. I spent around like nine months preparing. That's for a baby, man. <laughs> for this exam. But keep in mind, like these weren't optimal hours. Like this was like trial and error, figuring out what is the best resource to use. So, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't optimal. I would say um, you shouldn't really think about the ESAT like a full-time job. Like I need to spend eight hours every single day of my waking life, um, you know, practicing for the ESAT because I feel like that just leads to burnout, you know? I feel like a better mentality was, or would be, that you, you just enjoy the problems. They're interesting problems. Sounds so cringe, but you just gain some satisfaction by, from doing the problems. And that should be your motivation for practicing. Okay, so unfortunately, we've had a slight mare with the storage yeah. and the video kind of got like cut <laughs> off. So we're doing the last bit now. Yeah. So I wanted to pass over to Aria because in fact, Aria has his own YouTube channel. Woo! Aria is going to Cambridge to study 
engineering and he has lots of useful tips. So to foremost, what is the YouTube channel going to be like? All right, thank you, Danny, for the free promo. It's what I've been waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so if you guys are interested in anything like ESAT tips, methods to save time, how to prepare for the interview, you know, go check out my channel and subscribe. And if I had to say any like concluding thoughts, you know, make sure you enjoy the process and just, just stay consistent. That's all it takes, to be honest.